Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what I wanted to go over was how to easily check the incoming gas pressure coming into a furnace or any appliance. All right, what I'm using is a digital manometer instead of a dial type manometer. Um, these are more accurate, um, and you you would use these for setting uh, multi-speed furnaces. Uh, you're gonna have to get down into the real low numbers like 0.2 and 0.45 inch water column when you're setting uh, variable speed and three speed gas uh, valves on furnaces. So anyway, uh, I end up using this digital manometer here and so you know for your reference for every one PSIG uh, what you're looking at is 27.6 inch water column. So one PSIG equals 27.6 water column. Natural gas coming in is normally five to seven inch water column. It can come in higher, you know, up around eight, but basically generally on normal houses, at least around here, we're looking at five to seven inch water column. And then for propane, you're looking at about 11 to 13 inch water column coming in uh, from the tank. If you're down much lower than that, if you're down at like 10, your multi-speed furnace may have problems, all right? Especially when you're, you're drawing a load from maybe your range and your dryer, you know, while you're trying to run. So I usually have the propane company set them at about 11 to 13 inch water calm coming into the furnace. All right, what we're going to do is just to make sure that this furnace actually has the correct incoming gas pressure, we're going to use our digital manometer. An easy way to do it, instead of coming into the, uh, the electrical gas valve tap, which has an Allen screw, we're going to come right into this cap right here. So we're going to turn the gas pressure off, all right? We're going to be installing a cap with a tap on it already. We're going to hook this right into our gas manometer. All right, so here we go. You're always going to use pipe wrenches. You're going to use two pipe wrenches basically at all times. All right, and you're going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of a 30 degree angle. Okay, and they're going to go opposite of each other. All right, now we're loose, so I'm only using one. But basically, when we want to take this cap off right here, we want to make sure that these threads don't become loose. All right, so we're going to take that off. We're going to use a little thread sealant. People call this pipe dope thread sealant. You know, they have a few different names for it. Mount our cap in. Most people just drill a hole in a cap like this and then they just tap in that brass piece. So now we're going to go ahead and put our manometer in place. Basically, you have the cap, then you have this brass tap, and then you have this is a, just a, basically minimizing the size of the barb to the tubing. Okay? But that's what's down there. So then you turn your manometer on, and we want to be in inch water column. All right? You see it's zeroed out right now. And we're going to go ahead and turn our valve on. When we turn our valve on, we see that we have 7.4 inch water column. All right. So we have our valve position on, and we're reading 7.4. All right. And then the other thing to do is you can get your other appliances running, uh, like if there's another furnace or a dryer. You know, you can get them running and then see if this is actually dropping and how much it is dropping. Because you want to have a sufficient incoming gas pressure. It's not as big of a deal when you have a furnace that's only a single speed because the single speed furnaces typically, not always, but typically run at about 3.4 to 3.8 inch water column on the inside uh, at the, uh, the electrical gas valve. All right. So 
So you want to make sure you have the proper incoming gas pressure in order for your gas furnace uh, or water heater or whatever other appliance just to make sure it's going to work properly. All right, but that's how it's done. And you just go ahead and turn this back off again and, and go ahead and uh, take that off and put on the new cap. You know, you're going to wipe off the excess thread seal before you leak test it with your uh, bubble leak detector. All right, make sure you do not use this detergent. Uh, and water, like soapy bubbles like that, uh, because that will corrode the pipe, especially in the case of CSST pipe, corrugated stainless steel tubing. Do not use dish detergent in water. Make sure you're using something non-corrosive, like a, uh, a dabber bottle like this with um, non-corrosive bubble leak detector. I always use the same bubble leak detector. I use that Super Blue Micron bubble leak detector. It tends to stay on the uh, threads longer. Um, but uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.